the débat, resuming debate. The Honourable Member for Kootenay Columbia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd also like to thank the mover of this bill, the member for Laurier-Saint Marie, for raising this important issue on behalf of Canadians, and this is an important issue. Canada's railways play an important part in our nation, not only for their value of moving goods and people, but as part of our cultural identity. We all know the story of the last spike, how the government worked with the Canadian Pacific Railway to build our first transcontinental railroad in 1885. That silver spike was driven into the rail bed in Craigalachie, just a few kilometers west of my riding of Kootenay, Columbia. At that time, rail was the most efficient way to transport goods and people from one end of the country to the other. That's why the government played an important role in funding and building the railway. Sir John A. Macdonald's government was brought down due to his accepting bribes from CPR for helping with the railway, and he was re-elected in part due to his promise to complete the railway. And after it was completed, it became popular to take the train across the country to see its sites, staying at many of the fantastic hotels that the rail company built to house wealthy guests, including Glacier Park Hotel in my riding. At that time, safety may not have been as important as it is today. It is said that Agnes MacDonald, wife of Prime Minister Sir John A. MacDonald, was so thrilled with the sight of the mountains that she rode the train's cow catcher all the way through. Now that must have been a moving experience for sure. Today we have a very different situation. The railroads are privately owned, but responsibility for their safety lies with the Government of Canada and the Federal Ministry of Transport. That responsibility, however, is currently one way. The government can order a railway to close or alter a crossing, but we can't order the railway to create one. And that's what this bill is about. Bill C-322 would grant the Minister of Transport the powers to require the construction of crossings on a rail line. Why is this important? Because the situation right now is untenable. Canadians, including individual and businesses, have demonstrated they sometimes have legitimate requirements to cross railways at locations other than regu currently regulated road crossings. But the rail companies refuse to allow the crossings and they refuse to make them safe. This is especially true where rail lines run along rivers and lakes. In order to reach the waterway, people are sometimes given the choice between taking an extremely long detour or crossing the tracks illegally and unsafely. In my own riding of Kootenay, Columbia, we have a situation like this. The Kicking Horse River is an offshoot of the mighty Columbia. It gets its colorful name from an incident in 1858 when Dr. James Hector, a member of the Palliser Expedition exploring the area, was kicked and knocked out by a horse while trying to lead it across the fast-moving water. The whitewater rafting in the Kicking Horse River outside of Golden, B.C. is some of the best in the world. Every summer, as many as 40,000 people, assisted by a number of successful companies, load onto rafts to challenge the rapids. The sport brings valuable ecotourism dollars into Golden and provides dozens of jobs, particularly for our youth. But to get to the water, rafting companies carefully led groups across the railway tracks to the lower canyon. And they've been doing so for over 40 years without a single accident. But last year, CPR told them their activity was illegal and stopped rafters from crossing the tracks, citing safety. I'll read to you from a statement from CP issued in early June 2016. CP said, we cannot support rafters accessing the Kicking Horse River at this location as it poses a significant risk to their own safety as well as the safety of CP crews and the freight they are transporting. Subsequently, CP put up a metal gate barricading the crossing and threatened to charge anyone who trespassed their, their word to get to the river. Let me repeat, rafters have been crossing the tracks there for 40 years without a single accident and now millions of dollars are potentially being lost to this rural seasonal economy because the company has decided not to create a safe crossing. Last summer, two companies began helicoptering people across this newly closed access, adding hundreds of dollars to the cost of family rafting vacations. And there's nothing the federal or provincial government can do about that until now. Bill C-322 will allow the Minister to order CP and other railways to create safe crossings in special situations like this. If rail companies are concerned about safety, the solution isn't to ban crossings, 
it's to make them safe. Now you may wonder, why wouldn't CP create a safe crossing to allow access to the Kicking Horse River? Initially, they said they would, but only if the federal or provincial government paid for it. That's right, this company, which earned over $6 billion in 2014 and made a profit of almost $540 million in the first quarter of 2016, said the taxpayers should be on the hook for them to build a crossing over their own tracks. This is unacceptable and it's worrisome. Level crossings must be built in strategic locations so that pedestrians and cyclists and even whitewater rafters can move around safely. The improvement of active transportation and the mobility of people are important priorities across Canada. It should be a no-brainer for every member of this House to support this legislation. Unfortunately, the government is hiding behind obsolete regulations that prevent the minister from ordering the construction of new crossings while he already has the power to order them closed. The government seems to be unwilling to take on the responsibility to give Canadians freedom of movement, to save Canadian lives, to force some companies to act in a way that favours small communities, to provide safe access to Canada's rivers and lakes across railroad tracks, which surely should be a fundamental right for every Canadian. I don't want to encourage anyone to illegally cross railroad, railway tracks. That's what government inaction would have you do. We want to make sure such crossings are legal and safe where they're needed. Across Canada, unregulated, unregulated crossings cause twice as many accidents and fatalities as regulated crossings. And in some places, hundreds of people cross railway tracks every morning. And of course, decades ago, kids in Saskatchewan would rock, walk the railroad tracks to get to school, and that may happen to some degree today as well. By one count on May 15, 2012, between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., 289 pedestrians and 81 cyclists crossed the railway right-of-way in Mile End between St. Dominique and Henri Julian Streets in Montreal. Every one of these Canadians could have been fined a minimum of $287, $287 under the Railway Safety Act. Under current laws, these were trespassers, and what they were doing is dangerous. The lack of safe crossings jeopardizes public safety and causes mobility issues in our communities. The New Democrats have introduced this bill because we want to improve the security for all Canadians, whether they are walking, cycling, driving, whitewater rafting, or just trying to access rivers and lakes near to their homes. Who else is supporting this legislation? There have been a number of groups, of course, Whitewater Rafters of British Columbia, Greater Victoria Cycling Coalition, BC Healthy Living Alliance, Saskatoon Cycles, Canada Bikes, Citizens for Safe Cycling, Walk Toronto, Cycle Toronto, Ontario by Bike, Jane's Walk, Velo Quebec, Piaton Quebec, Outremont Pedestrians and Cyclists Association, and a variety of municipalities, cities, and businesses. Mr. Speaker, I invite members to join with me in supporting this legislation, which simply gives the Transport Minister powers to create safe crossings where they don't already exist. It's in the interest of communities, in the interest of Canadians, and in the interest of safety. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Resuming debate.